The new Haas F1 era without Gunter Steiner has officially started with the digital reveal of its 2024 car, but things look like they could get tougher for F1's bottom team before they get better. The VF24 has broken cover in a series of renders, and while we'd imagine the real thing could look a little different and more evolved, there are already red flags we're concerned about. These come a little from the first look at the new car, which seems on the surface to be no great advancement on its predecessor, alongside a clear line of expectation management from the team. That's a worry for Haas, given it finished last in the championship in 2023 and had some big car issues to overcome, which we'll explain shortly. The VF24 clearly has its roots in the change in aerodynamic concept that Haas introduced at last year's United States Grand Prix in October. Haas was limited in how much it could do last season, and new team boss Ayo Komatsu calls the VF24 a full-blown version of that late 2023 concept, with changes to the fundamental architecture needed to make the most of this direction. That includes changes to the monocoque side impact structure position and the packaging under the bodywork, as well as the side pods and engine cover. Effectively, this means Haas has moved from what was at the start of last year a Ferrari-style aerodynamic concept to the trend Red Bull has set. And before we get into Komatsu's surprisingly blunt outlook, which you'll definitely want to stick around for, let's take a closer look at the detail based on the 10 renders released by Haas. The images do show a clear evolution from last year's Haas, but there's always the possibility there will be features on the real car that are either missing or hidden for now, revealed when it first hits the track on a filming day at Silverstone on February 11th. As always, Haas has taken as much as it can from Ferrari. It has access to the latest specification transferable parts, meaning the mechanical package and much of what is under the skin comes from Ferrari, including the gearbox. It retains the pushrod suspension geometry at the front. The top wishbone rear leg chassis pickup is just visible in these images. As the race's technical expert Gary Anderson has noted, this indicates Haas has a fair amount of anti-dive in the front suspension. This follows the direction Red Bull has mastered so expertly and is all about platform control, as is the anti-squat on the rear suspension, where Haas retains the pull rod geometry but the front leg of the upper wishbone is mounted lower on the gearbox. Key performance dictating components such as the monocoque and the aerodynamic surfaces must all be Haas's own work, and the side pod shape follows the Red Bull approach with an aggressive undercut. It's clearly a step forward from the Austin 2023 specification, following in the trend after Haas moved to more of a downwash design. The engine cover bodywork has also been modified to work with this. We can't see much detail of the floor edges or the floor fences. However, we can see the outer floor fence, which has also been shaped to follow the Red Bull direction. That's logical given it interacts with the side pod undercut that is designed to allow greater airflow through this area. That should improve the performance of the front of the floor. There are also packaging changes here. To facilitate that undercut, the radiator inlets have been moved higher and widened slightly, creating more of a letterbox shape. Again, this follows the prevailing trend set by Red Bull. This inlet shape allows the top surface of the side pod to be optimised and allows the radiator spillage to mix with that airflow, which improves the efficiency of the front corner of the floor and also helps to seal the floor further rearward. Reducing the side pod cooling inlet means additional cooling is needed elsewhere. The rollover bar is very similar to the VF23, but limpet inlets have been added to the sides of this to increase the cooling flow in that area. We can also see signs of the monocoque change in the fact the lower side impact structure has been moved down. The front wing and nose look similar to the Austin specification, so we'll have to wait and see what Haas has to offer when the real car is spotted. There's also very deliberately no detail of the diffuser, which is shrouded in darkness in the renders. One final thing we have noticed is what Anderson describes as a more dramatic rear beam wing, where the top flap and main plane are positioned to improve the performance of the diffuser. While Haas has switched to a similar car concept to that pioneered by Red Bull and followed by many other teams, that doesn't mean we should expect a sudden leap forward in performance. In fact, Haas is actually predicting the opposite. We'd already heard from Komatsu in the wake of Steiner's departure, and the reshuffle had the air of team owner Gene Haas tasking Komatsu with making immediate progress leading the team off the back of the grid. Initially, the tone was good, and Komatsu claimed the 2024 car would be a clear step from last year's troubled machine but already he was talking about being realistic for Haas's prospects of challenging more in the midfield, and implied the 2024 car isn't as well advanced as it should be. That's because the car concept was changed so late last year and resources were diverted to do that, and now Haas would need time to work out the best way to develop the 2024 car under new technical director Andrea De Zordo. Well, now the VF24 has been revealed, Komatsu's not just doubled down on all of that, he's gone even more flat out. 
Komatsu says plainly that the launch spec has is not going to be quick enough in Bahrain as a direct result of stopping development on the VF24 for two months to get that Austin package together. He's not quite arguing that Haas shouldn't have bothered with that interim step and focused instead entirely on the 2024 car because he believes it did help confirm it was the right direction to go in, but it has clearly left Haas further behind versus where it could have been had the VF24 been its sole focus in the second half of 2023. And Komatsu's hopes are so low that he reckons Haas will probably be the worst team at the start of the new season. That means the focus on testing and the first race in Bahrain is going to be to get as much data as possible to work out which direction to develop the car and really understand its strengths and weaknesses. In saying that, Komatsu has dropped a thinly veiled dig on the previous regime, not just Steiner, but former technical director Simone Resta, because Komatsu says that previously Haas failed to put together a coherent plan to produce updates. That's why there's been a big focus on restructuring the technical organisation in a short space of time, emphasising better transparency, openness and communication, including creating the new role of performance director, with a tighter focus on overseeing in-season updates. That will be held by Damien Brayshaw, previously Haas's head of vehicle performance. Basically, Komatsu's given a very frank assessment of the team's existing shortcomings and how the past 12 months have put Haas on the back foot heading into 2024. It really sounds like we shouldn't expect too much at the start of the year and there's an awful lot of work to do to address that through the season. This jars at least a little with an owner seemingly demanding instant progress. The Haas VF23 was a quick car over a lap, reaching Q3 11 times last year. Nico Hülkenberg was even second fastest in qualifying in the wet in Canada. Where things went wrong is when multiple laps were strung together in races thanks to working the Pirellis too hard. Haas and its drivers tried everything in terms of setup options and approach to the races, whether that was protecting the tyre or attacking and accepting it would mean more pit stops, but nothing worked. Last year, Haas wasn't able to understand the problem fully. At first, there were suspicions it could be related to the mechanical package given Ferrari also had tyre troubles and supplies Haas with its suspension systems. However, it increasingly became clear the problem lay with the car's aerodynamic characteristics. Specifically, the loss of downforce when the car was in your, i.e. when turning, led to inconsistent levels of aerodynamic load. That was overworking the tyres, but Haas needs to show it's understood the reasons for the problems in your. Haas took drastic action last year to tackle this. Its aerodynamic development in the wind tunnel flatlined in the early months of the season with negligible performance found. That meant that while it had the budget to manufacture upgrades, it didn't have the designs to justify doing so. Komatsu has attributed that to poor communication in the team, an area he's determined to improve this year, but particularly when it comes to the way the UK-based race team and the Italy-based design office collaborate. It was hoped the upgraded car in Austin would ease the tyre consumption problems for Haas last year, but that didn't prove to be the case, and the upgraded car was inferior in the high-speed corners but had some improved characteristics in the slower corners, or at least it did according to Kevin Magnussen, who preferred the corner entry behaviour of the new version. But for the final couple of 2023 weekends, Haas split its packages with Hülkenberg using the old car and Magnussen the new. This doesn't mean that Magnussen particularly liked the new version as he admitted at the end of the season that he would have preferred to revert to the old specification as well. Much of what we've said so far might sound disastrous for Haas, especially as it follows that end of 2023 narrative that certainly wasn't good news. But there is a potential benefit in that it at least allowed Haas to run and understand this new direction. The current generation of F1 cars can take time to get the best out of and refine. For that reason, Haas can take confidence from the experience of Aston Martin. Aston introduced a dramatically different car concept at the Spanish Grand Prix in May 2022. That change didn't yield instant improvement, but the car became much stronger later in the season. And it took a big leap forward after that, with technical chief Dan Fallow saying that was the start of a journey that took Aston Martin to the podium regularly in the first half of 2023. We're not saying that Haas will catapult into podium contention itself, but this example shows that a new concept not working immediately doesn't necessarily mean it's fundamentally wrong. So while Komatsu has reservations about where his own team will start 2024, the work Haas has done in the last few months is about giving it a better base to build from and maybe reverse its usual trend of starting brightly before fading. Haas's key 2023 lessons will have been fed into this 2024 car and the ongoing development plan. The question is whether or not those lessons have been well understood, and what's realistic to achieve once we know if Haas's pessimism for its place in the pecking order is confirmed in reality.